Welcome back. Usually on Thursdays we do mixing with Maggie, but this week Maggie Golden needed the day off. So instead of leaving you all empty handed, we're changing things up, making it a bit more personal and maybe even super heartfelt with mixing improvised. This week we're taking one from my Italian New York family and sharing a special recipe for pignoli cookies. But first, let's talk about the good old Italian family, particularly my grandparents on my mom's side. So let's go and take a look at my grandma. She turns 95 this weekend, so I'm gonna be taking a trip up to Long Island over the next few days. She is by far the best Italian cook I've ever met in my entire life. She can make the most bomb like pasta with meatballs and pasta galore and everything and uh, she's turning 95 and I'm very lucky to still have her and the next step we have my grandpa so this is a, a little picture of me uh, my grandpa passed when I was in middle school he was seriously the most amazing guy he used to really give up himself during the month of December dressing up as Santa Claus and he <laughs> is known for his amazing calamari and then his focaccia bread, which I'm gonna have to go making. Uh, it's kind of like a, a play on pizza, but uh, the two of them were just the most amazing Italian cooks I've ever met in my entire life, and they've taught me a lot. But today's pignoli cookies, we're gonna get right, oh, oh, before we get to the recipe, one of the most important things being Italian is your family, and this is a little glimpse of my, my gang here. Uh, th these are my cousins from my older sister's wedding. We all fit into like the photo booth and we all came together and stuff. Family is very important to Italians and something else that's very important is anything that you go making, you have to make it with love. If you don't have love, it's not going to be any good and you're just, you might as well just throw it in the garbage. But taking a look at the ingredients <laughs> for the pignoli cookies, you need one ounce of, uh, you need one seven ounce tube of almond paste. I know that Harris Teeter sells one that is actually eight ounces. You can use that. You, then you need a half cup of confection or powdered sugar. Do not even attempt to use the regular sugar. Also, a half teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. And then the other ingredients are going to be a fourth teaspoon of kosher salt. You can use one large egg white, or if you're a slacker sometimes when it comes to cooking you just and you don't like wasting anything, you could just use the entire egg. It's just going to make it a little bit more dense. And then the last ingredient that you need is going to be two-thirds of a cup of pine nuts. A viewer the other day when I posted uh, these cookies online was wondering if you could use any other nuts, and I think you could possibly substitute almond, but for pignoli, the pignoli cookie, you need pine nuts. So, and then here are the exact directions. You're gonna go preheating the oven to 350. You're gonna go uh, lining a uh, cooking sheet with either uh, parchment paper or aluminum foil. Break apart the almond uh, paste. It's pretty easy and you're gonna throw it into one of those bowls that you can go using a food presser, uh, processor with. Add confection, powdered sugar, vanilla extract, salt, the eggs and then you start mixing away. You're gonna wanna use the food presser, uh, processor, excuse me, because if you attempt to do it with a spoon, you're really not gonna get anywhere, so you need that extra power. And then you're gonna scoop the one tablespoon uh, ball sizes, and you're gonna go putting them out onto that sheet that you had already prepared, and then you're gonna throw it into the oven for about, I'd say, maybe 16 to 18 minutes, depending on how big of a cookie you go making. And then, of course, when that's done, you take it out and you let it cool before you really go removing them from the spatula. And we do have a picture of the unprepared cookies. So you could see, um, I kind of go a little bit bigger on my cookies. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a real Italian who doesn't like to use the spoon to portion them out. I like to just use my hand and whatever size I get is what I get. And you can see that the two cookies, he's just laughing away at me. Uh, the cookies all the way on the left side of the corner in the back, um, I ran out of pignoli nuts. And so I ended up just making semi-plain cookies. Honestly, these are so good, you can make them plain. Yeah. Uh, but overall, they're really, really good. And I am now gluten-free and lactose-free. I try to do dairy-free too, because it's just mm -hmm. easier. But um, when you kind of con combine those two things, it's difficult to find sweets that yeah. I can go eating. Yeah. And so usually my family prepares these for Christmas, but they are so good all the time. Yeah. They have so much flavor. You, you can't ever go wrong with assorted cookies mm -hmm. and it, it's great to experience all different kinds. Yeah. This is one I might have to take home to the Ironmonger family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these so look delicious. These ones I prepared on my work weekend, which was Monday and Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And something that's really cool that you can do is you can portion them out. Mm -hmm. The the recipe here, I think you make like 12 cookies and you could just kind of portion them out. Usually I portion like two at a time, put them in the freezer. And when I'm in the mood for something sweet, I take like the portion of two and put them in the oven. You could do like 350 okay. for like 10 minutes or whatever this way. They last longer. And so that's 
that's kind of what I did with these ones. Now, how long would you recommend someone if someone were to go that route and mm -hmm. try to just parse them out? How long would you say that dough is going to be good for in your freezer? Would you give it? They're not going to last very long in the okay. freezer because you're going to be eating them. Well, there you go. There <laughs> like you I'd go. Say but say you've got a lot of self control. I don't have self control with them. <laughs> like, usually I'll eat like one or two cookies a week. And so they're gone, like every month, I'll go making a new batch. Okay. But you wanna, when I was heating these up in the oven before, you wanna talk about the smell? Yeah, Because yeah. it was really taken over the kitchen. Yeah, if you've ever toasted almonds before, you, you know that there is a fine line between toasted and mm -hmm. burnt. It's very easy There's to no burn wreck in here. almonds. But <laughs> these, again, with the almond paste, it adds that, that scent Sweet. of toasted almond mm -hmm. to, again, a cookie. So you get kind of that combo of both yeah. that just smell amazing. It smells like a, you, you know, like you stepped into Julia Child's kitchen. This mm -hmm. is what you'd expect to smell yeah. in the oven, or at least coming out of the oven. And they, that's a close-up picture of it. Like you, the way that you want to make it is so that they're very golden. You don't want to go cooking them too much because then they're just gonna don't wanna, not be. Don't want to burn the pine nuts for yes, sure. Yes, you don't want to burn. And then also, if you're gonna go freezing them and then cooking them again, you really don't want to overdo it. Yeah. But um, enough of us talking. You want to go right, digging I'll in? Snag one for sure. Again. Love pine nuts, big fan of pine nuts. So this type of cookie, I first heard the name, never heard of it before. Yeah. But then he said, oh yeah, there's pine nuts on it. Ding, 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 mm -hmm. got it, yes. Because he even said that pine nuts are usually used in pesto sauce, mm -hmm. which is another Italian delicacy. Mm. Mm? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yeah. Were you impressed? No, I got food in my mouth, so I'm not supposed to talk. Oh, Sorry, you can Mom. do it, we won't judge. <laughs> uh -uh. But, again, Mm. The almond paste makes this. Yeah. It's kind of the, the secret ingredient that separates it from normal cookies. Mm -hmm. And you can taste it in there. And combined with the pine nuts, mm. that is amazing flavor. Yes. Well done. Mm. Well done. You said your, your grandmother, mm -hmm. this is her recipe? Sort of, yeah. Grandmother um, Parsons, you win. <laughs> she didn't really have like an official recipe, so I kind of went like searching for one. Mm -hmm. And before I ever made it, I made sure I had the approval of her. There you and go. that like this looked good, so... Essentially, this is a Naglieri <laughs> recipe. There we go. Excuse That's me. That's the Italian Excuse name. Me. So, <laughs> Grandma's birthday is tomorrow. Uh, Pinoli cookies. I hope that if you go making them, you go posting them online. Tag us in it. I want to see your creations. And we have way more ENC at three coming your way right after the break. Excellent. Back to the cookies. <laughs> oh.